it's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Yo ho ho! Chapter 7, Lesson 2. Moving on to look at the nested form of polynomials. So what is that all about? Well, if I give you a function, say g of x, which equals 2x cubed minus 4x squared, add 5x, take 9, and I asked you to work out, for example, g of 2, then there are two ways to do this. The first way, the way that you're thinking probably, is that you can replace x with 2. And you are perfectly right. You can substitute 2 in in place of x. However, there is another way of doing this. Oh, yes. And that other way is using something known as the nested form. I'm going to do a few examples and I will use them to talk you through what the nested form is all about. So, example one, use the nested form to calculate the value of f of 2 when f of x equals this function here. So, the nested form is set out like this. This is a way of working out what f of 2 would be. What you do is you take your coefficients of the x terms, so take the coefficient of the x cubed, the x squared, the x, and then the number on the end, and you set them out like this, just with an L shape. Lots of pupils call this the L shape because you are setting the numbers out just within this L. So you've got two, that's the number of x cubed, then the number of x squared, then the number of x's, then the number on its own. So you'd set up the coefficients. Then what you want to do is you want to think, right, well, if you want the f of 2 just to the left of this vertical line, you write a 2. After that, you want to go through and you want to start off just with this 2 here and you want to add your columns together. So add the columns, you think, right, 2 add, there's nothing below it, so 2 add, nothing gives you 2. Then what you do is you want to move on to the next column. So to do that, you then multiply across. So you take this 2 here and you do 2 times 2, which obviously gives you 4. So you multiply that across and you write the 4 there. After that, you add the columns. So think negative 4, add 4. Well, that gives you 0, so you write that down there. And then the same thing, you multiply across. So you're always using this 2, so now you do 2 times 0. And 2 times 0 is obviously 0. Woo! After that, you then add the columns. So 5 add 0 is still 5. And then again, multiply across. So take this 2, and you're now multiplying by the 5. So 2 times 5 gives you 10. Woo! After that, add the columns. So negative 9 add 10, that will give you positive 1. And that is where you stop. I'm also adding this wee line here to show that's where I finish. That is the end. And what that means is that if you were asked to work out the f of 2, this number on the end shows you what you would get. So you could say the f of 2 would be 1. And that is the nested form. Some of you, though, probably thinking, what's the point in doing this? Why would you use the nested form? Why not just substitute in 2? It's a lot quicker. Well, later on, what we're going to do is we're going to factorise polynomials. And for that, you need to use the nested form, which is why I'm showing you it now, so you can practice. Let's move on to a second example. Example number 2. Use the nested form to evaluate f of x when x equals 4. So same thing, you want to take the coefficients this time of x to the power of 4, x to the power of 3, x squared, x, and then the number on the end, and set them up just with this L shape. So doing that, you will have 2, then 3, then negative 10x squared, negative 5x, and then plus 7. x is 4, so over here, just to the left, you're going to write in 4. After that, you're doing the same thing. You add the columns, you multiply across. So bring the 2 down. There's nothing below it. So 2 add 0 is just going to be 2. After that, multiply across. So 4 times 2 gives you 8. Add these, you end up with 11. Multiply there, you end up with 44. If you add them, you're getting 34. Multiply there, 4 times 34, that gives you 136. If you add them together, so negative 5 add 136, or 136 take away 5, and you end up with 131. 4 times 131 gives you 524. And if you add them together, 7 add 524, you get 531. And that is where you would stop. Again, I'm just adding this extra line. Meaning then, if you worked out f of 4, you would get 531. That would be your answer. 
Let's try one more. Example number three. Find the value of x to the power of 4 minus 5x cubed plus 6x plus 3 when x is negative 3. Now there is something different about this one. James, do you notice what it is? Well done, James. Is everybody else as smart as James? Good. Everybody's nodding. With this one here, you'll notice there's no x squared term. It goes x to the power of 4, x to the power of 3. There's no x squared, and then it goes to x, and then just your number on the end. However, you still have to include your x squared. If there's a missing power, then you would say the coefficient is 0, because really here you'd have x to the power of 4 minus 5x cubed, add 0x squared, add 6x, add 3. So you still have to include that in your L shape when you're using your nested form. So coefficients, we've got one, the negative five, then zero, make sure you include that, and then six and then three. We're wanting to evaluate this when x is negative three, so we put a negative three here, but the wink, and then work our way across. So add the columns, there's nothing below the one. So one add zero just gives you one, really, you're just bringing that down. Multiply across, so negative three times one is negative three. Add these together, negative 5 add negative 3 is negative 8. Be very careful with the negatives. Multiply across, so negative 3 times negative 8. That'll give you 24. Add them, that still gives you 24. Multiply across, so negative 3 times 24, you get negative 72. If you add them, you end up with negative 66. Multiply negative 3 by negative 66. Two negatives make a positive, so that will give you 198. And then if you add them, you'll end up with 201. Therefore, you can say that when x is negative 3, the value will be 201. So that is the nested form. As I said, you will need that when we are going to factorise polynomials. But practice it now. See how you get on. It's exercise 7b in the Heinemann Harbour. Good luck. Have fun.